Hello from Dave Herman, alias Does, the artist living and working in Olympia, Washington. Uh, Thursday night, 709-1010-2019, October 10th. I'm going to do a little work on my totem. Uh, this is either a walking stick or a totem pole or a laser weapon of the Lords or whatever with an android. Uh, species hand type uh, transhuman whatever godlike thing holding it almost so let's zoom in on the face working in affinity designer these days so uh, we'll go over to magnifying glass we'll put the pen magnifying glass with a little plus sign right in the center of the head and draw it up then we'll get the hand move it over to the center of the screen and we'll bring it up a little bit more with the magnifying glass. Okay, let's detail. Go into pen, or brush, I mean. So, uh, yeah, brush. And I want to go to a pencil. So I go over here to the right in the brushes tab. And select brushes and go down to basic, which is just solids. And we're going to select a nice, like, two-pointer. Actually, we can go four-pointer. And that's just a solid black, because in swatches, we will select black. And now, I'm going to work up the face. So I'm going to... Uh, what am I going to do? Turn on my Express Key Remote. You can see the dot right there. See that? Okay. And that's a micro dot pencil line at 11 pixels. I just did a drawing for someone uh, that's an etching into metal at 0.2 of a pixel. Blew their mind. <laughs> and mine. Okay. So let's get into this. I've created a new pixel layer. And I'm going to do some fine pencil work here, see? And this is not in vector. I could do this in vector, but I don't really want to play around with the lines. I just want to do them or erase them like you see in the bot arm to the right. And I like to come up with creativity on the fly. So I'm going to do that. Um, I'm all, this is more like a pen line. Excuse me, boy, I did a 25-mile bike ride today earlier. I'm really doing those. I love riding in the fall. I'm going to undo this line, first of all. The reason I'm taking this line back is um, I want to soften it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the opacity to about 70 and change the flow to about... 30 and change the hardness to about 70, 60, whatever it is. And let's try making a line again. I just want to see if I it doesn't have to be as harsh. That's good. And now I'm going to create uh, some kind of magic in this face. So that's how I work, you know. Uh, so in today's adventure, We'll go a little bigger. I rode my bike out uh, about 13 miles down a trail, and then I found uh, an access point to carry it down just through the rocks and trees, about eight foot to uh, a pile of rocks and debris and uh, fallen trees and stumps and stuff where I could get down to the fresh water and look at the water and watch the leaves go by, watch the, everything happening in the water. It was totally epic, very relaxing. I spent an hour down at the water, brought myself a couple coffees in my little thermoses, and uh, not much coffee, divided up a 12-ouncer between two thermoses, six ounces each, so 
wasn't that much coffee, but uh, a little cream with sugar, or a little cream and honey was excellent. So I'm looking at this, and again, still, I, I want it softer. So I'm going to edit these out. Bye. Uh, hit the tab key when that happens. Should put me back. Uh, what's going on here? Tab, tab. Okay. And pixel persona. There we go. You gotta watch me at the keyboard, man. I'm dangerous. Don't touch the keyboard, does. Don't touch the keyboard. Yeah, you know, and and if you don't watch Affinity, Affinity does its own thing. There's something very weird about Affinity. Uh, if you go to tabs, touch something, sometimes other things leap out or do things. I still want a soft edge on this, so what I'm going to do, I'm not ready for that clean cut line yet. Okay, I'm going to go to a brush instead of a pen. The solid is not working for me. So if I go over to the brush tab and go back to uh, pencils, let's see what pens are for a second. I can find something. I do. Maybe a little textured one. Let's see about these. There we go. Let's try number 16. And it's set to 16 pixels. Let's see what that does for me. So I'm going to uh, gently shape. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. It's got a little bit of a texture. You see how fine that line is at the uh, epicanthic fold there towards, his, towards the nose. But yeah, it's kind of uh, it's kind of broken up. Like if you had a Prismacolor, and as you draw it, crumbles, and it makes that cool line. It's kind of kind of what I wanted there. And then I'm going to come up here. Yes. Because I don't know where I'm going with this, but I'm going now. I'm going to do some fancy line work. Is basically what we're going to do. And uh, sometimes I drill these down. They take 50, 100 hours. <laughs> so it's why I have to walk away from them. Like the last three days I looked at this, even though I did a little bit of work one night, and I just said, you know, I can't stare at this detail anymore. i got to get away because my invention process, sometimes it just gets away from me, even though I'm a, Freestyler, and I let it happen. You know, free association. Um, I pay a price for that. Sometimes my brain just gets fried. So uh, every week I'm trying to do 100 miles on the bicycle. Now I work out three nights in the gym. It's the way I get in the fall. Fall is my absolutely favorite season. It motivates me more than anything. I like it way better than summer. I'm just one of those guys. Summers are nice. Uh, don't get me wrong, anyone who doesn't like summer is completely whack, but um, it's, it's, it's not my creative time. My creative time is fall, and typically later in the day, you know, I'm older now, uh, I get up kind of leisurely. Once I get up, I animate myself, make myself get going and pick up some speed, so by 12 o'clock... <laughs> Uh, I've showered and I've eaten breakfast and I've uh, done the mail and answered the emails and go through all the uh, mundane, redundant things I got to do as a business owner. But uh, it isn't until about two in the afternoon that I'm really feeling like I should focus and get stuff done. And then it really. I meander around, eat some snacks, wander, take a uh, stretch outside, whatever. Finally get motivated around two. <clears throat> now looking at these, I have to find the magic inside this. It's hidden in there. you got to stare at them and stare at them. Can't figure out what's going on. 
what you see. What the totem means. I'm yawning away. Yeah. So today's ride was excellent. I rode, like I say, out in Sapphire River. And the river was wonderful. And the river gave me a lot of artist inspiration. Looking into the water, I see the multi-layers, the multiverse that I create. So you can see the magnificent reflections and how you get into the multiverse layers and where it comes from, if you watch my video, which I didn't post because I sent that out to private peeps. But when I went to post to Facebook, Facebook gave me a problem with that, and so I just canned it, got rid of it, just said, ah, screw it. And so I just dumped it. But that happens. I will say this, the only way to, to understand this, in my opinion, how to uh, draw, how to use the hardware and the software and everything, is to just do it. <laughs> There's no other way to be certain about it. Don't let the internet get you freaked out. And I've been reading and studying a lot of stuff about the way the net works these days because being into sci-fi, you want to think about the AI and all that. And there really is no AI. That's just marketing right now. Basically, what the machines are doing is they got more and more servers and more and more data storage and more and more places to put the information so it goes through the information at the speed of light, and uh, since it, can, it never loses the information and can always access it, uh, it's right there for it, and then it finds it faster, and it makes a decision faster, and it seems like it's thinking, but it's not even remotely doing anything like thinking. And I don't care what they tell you, all these guys with their grants and everything. I have studied deep learning. Uh, terrific series by Lex Friedman, F R I D M A N. He's a prof in uh, deep learning and you know artificial intelligence and math. And he does a nice interview series with probably 60 different people and stuff, uh, including Elon Musk and uh, all the progenitors of things and the creators and the physicists. And they drill it down to the facts. And even though those guys give these elaborate answers, he calls them out in a very polite way saying, you know, basically you haven't said anything. <laughs> like that really sounds impressive, but it's not doing that. I mean, we know it's not doing what you just said it was doing. <laughs> Pretty funny. So, the reason I bring this up is I recently had to repair my laptop and find out what was going on with it. You know, it had a complete meltdown. And uh, that led eventually for other people to touch my machine and finally figured out that it was uh, the cord and the battery somewhere in there and both were ordered and uh, the new cord and the new battery both I don't understand how they go at the same time but they actually did in my case and so first I got a used cord and that proved to work you don't need your battery in your laptop I'm sure you guys know it but I didn't know that it's only for working Offline, uh, off of uh, when you're unplugged, or to have a backup in case you're working on something and your power went out in your house, you can do something before it turns off in three or four hours. <clears throat> so I, I run now without the battery in it, and I find that works. And so what I did is I got a used cord, I tested that, it was the cord 
uh, for sure. Then when I got the cord up and running, I ordered a battery. Then I put my old one battery in with the cord I first bought, and that was a problem. And then I <clears throat> took the battery out and bought a brand new cord. Then that new cord really made it work better. Then I had to monkey around with the system, the hardware, I mean the software end of it, the, the internal word programs. And then I had to uh, eventually get a battery, and then I got a new battery, and I put it in there, and charged it, and took it out, and then ran it unplugged with the battery, and tested the battery, and the battery ran for a good four hours, and took that, and charged it back up with the plug in, and then keep the battery separate. And so it's been a long process, but you know what? Nobody I know, I don't care how much money they're making, some of these guys are millionaires that I tattoo and have acquaintance, become acquainted with, that are coders and programmers. And they don't know the solutions because they're all using apples, and with apples, they don't really play around with the guts or, the, or the modifying it or anything like that. They just let Apple do everything for them, you know? And if their whole computer blew up and they had to throw it in the trash, they really don't care. Whereas, you know, a lesser well-to-do person like myself likes to make things last. So, uh, this whole journey has led me to now want to, now that I got the cord and the battery working, and sorted out all the hardware updates uh, Windows is having its own little conniption fits with its uh, software these days, and every day I turn it on, there's an upgrade for Windows Defender and all that good stuff. Uh, then I decided, you know, I probably need more RAM because it would process my artwork faster. See, now I'm going to save this. You can see how nice everything is running at the moment. Because we're even recording with uh, camera software. Everything I do is independent of each other. It doesn't come in a box like a Mac. You know, it makes you use your brain, and it makes you learn uh, about it, whether you want to or not. You have to, <laughs> unless you want to pay people to think for you. And I'm not paying anybody to figure stuff out at 100 and 150 bucks an hour that they don't know to begin with, but they keep saying we're getting closer or something like that. I've watched every guy work on a computer, and they always, if they know one thing, they can fix it, but they'll damage 10 things because they have no idea what doing what they did affects everything else. So everyone fronts that stuff. So it's better to learn yourself and pay the price yourself by buying and replacing things because it will be cheaper than hiring somebody and, and the result is in the end you know exactly what it took to fix it, how it was caused, and how not to do it again, and sometimes it leads you down an even better path to improve your whole situation in life. So ever since I got the Wacom Cintiq Pro 24-inch monitor, which is what I'm drawing on, and to me it's the most spectacular device there is, unless you can afford the 32-inch. They're actually one more large size, but it would be too big for my studio. I'd need to be in a warehouse for that. I know this is a living room, dining room, kitchen. It's all one room, 18 by 22 in my little house. So... 24 inches more than adequate, and it's, uh, you know, 4K resolution, and when you put movies in it, it works great as a screen, so I highly recommend one of them. They're pricey. But ever since I got that, it's led me on to another journey, a journey of how to make it run with my current laptop, um, and really, even though people tell you there's a limit to everything, it's not true. If you drill it, I mean, there's certain limits that are built into firmware, hardware, and software. But there's sometimes very doable workarounds, 
or maybe you have to replace three parts instead of one, but you can get a uh, better result. So maybe it costs you, say, 200 bucks to modify your machine as opposed to spending $2,000 to get a whole new machine if they can do it. When you can change your RAM, you can change your drives, you can add a drive, you can do different things. And so, um, that's the path owning one of these antiques has put me on. And I now have two uh, 8 gig RAM uh, cards coming, to, which will be a total of 16 gigs of RAM, to put into my computer, which is currently 8 gigs of RAM and a terabyte drive. Now, this machine can be upgraded to 2 terabytes and 32 gigs. But to do the 32 gig, it's a complicated thing because when you take the back off, you'll see a 4 gig uh, card in there. And in front of that is, and behind it is another 4 gig RAM card, but that you can, can't get at unless you take out everything from your computer because it's behind the keyboard side. So, since they did that to mess with your brain, And it comes with 8 gigs of RAM, which, but in two 4 gig cards, one that which you have you have no access to. You can put in two 8 gigs of RAM behind it in the slots, so you have 16 plus 8 gives you 24 gigs of RAM, which everyone tells me 24 will be more than adequate for processing. See how nice this pencil line is? So there you have it. I picked number 16 in the brushes. Uh, tab from pens. It's because I try stuff. Totally digging that texture on my charcoal. Now, I'm going to continue to divide up some line work. And another thing is because I study uh, ancient archaeology and um, high tech ancient civilizations, the Mayans, the Incans, the Aztec, the Olmecs, the Toltecs, and, and on and on and on the commissions, and so on. Once you study their stuff, you see that all the artists, Mobius, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of some of the great French artists, uh, Inky Bilal, the guy that did uh, Immortal 2000, and whatever, Ed, Ed Beaton, Immortal, the comic. Look up Enki Bilal, genius. Look up Mobius, genius. But those guys copied everything from the Aztecs, the Mayans, the Olmecs, and the Altec. When you go back and look at that stuff, architects like Frank Lloyd Wright, they had seen all that stuff. So Frank Lloyd Wright really keyed in on the Japanese and you know, that was a big influence in his work. When you study those things just randomly, like as a, not a person taking a class towards a degree, but as a self-learner, you come across pictures on the internet that are in no books anywhere, and that those guys never even saw themselves, and the things that other people did see. And you begin to see how one uh, influence the other, influence the other, cobbling off of another, saying we've invented this, we've invented that, uh, cubism and so on. When you look at the ancient Mayan and Incan sculptures that you never see in books, but the guys like Brian Forster of uh, Hidden Inca Tours, all on YouTube, uh, the things that those guys discover in their personal journeys and paying people to let them into the back of museums and so on, it's all there. Everything was seen by these guys that were so, supposed to be so creative. Now, they did have photographic memory, so they could sit and draw super fantastic all the characters without ever using references and stuff out of their heads because they see it like a camera. I've watched every cartoon artist in the world. It's great. 
imagines the entire frame in his head. He might start in the upper right, doesn't finish, goes to the lower left, goes over to the middle, comes back to the upper right, goes to the upper left, comes down to the lower right. They move all over, and in 10 minutes, they get a gorgeous picture. So it has a lot to do with photographic memory. And uh, for the rest of us, like myself, <laughs> and people watching me, Man, you got to draw. Just draw every day. Draw, draw, draw. Fill up your head with references. <clears throat> Just look at stuff and draw stuff. Animal, vegetable, mineral, everything. Even a trash can, even a doorknob. Draw, draw, draw. And then your mind starts to put it together. Just like it was an AI building from all its potential archives. When my machine is purring like a kit, it just runs perfectly. I've done so much tweaking, and when I get that extra RAM, oh my God, this thing is going to be amazing. And when I say amazing, it doesn't give me any more skill. <coughs> Excuse me. What it does for me is it, it speeds up the time and uh, backing things up is something else you got to learn. So I do that at the end of every uh, day and things like that. But saving is first step. Make sure you save everything. Now we're drawing something very large here. Uh, like I was using pencils and Conti crayons and charcoal in a black and gray spectrum. Uh, playing with the size of the pen tip and so on. And uh, it's not crashing. It's not having any problems anymore that way. Anytime I hear the fan go on in my laptop, I'll say to be sure. Because it's either overheating because it's maxed out, or it's processing and processing these blends that are very complicated files, algorithms. And uh, so you want to assist it by saving. Just save. The texture and all this stuff, it's just so dramatically cool. Another three or four years, I'm going to be like the sorcerer in the uh, digital world. There's no doubt about it. I have the imagination. I was born with that. But it took me six years to understand the tools, understand nesting files, understand the uh, hardware, the software, all that stuff. Because I'm a one-man show. I'm not part of a staff. I don't have anchors. I don't, I don't have anybody. Just me. Like people that do comics are a group of people that build a comic or a novel or a graphic novel. So since I'm a loner, a monk, <laughs> I, uh, I have to teach myself everything. And at first I was very resistant to that. But as time went on, I just reconciled myself to the fact that that's the way it's going to be. You know, you can do it or not do it. And then you become an esoteric wizard. But, um, should somebody need something down the road, I don't know how to do it, and I'll charge them money to do it. Or they don't have to do it. But if they want it fixed, and I say I know how to fix something, I will know how to fix what I'm talking about. I won't be putzing with it. I'll say this is it. It'll take me a, an hour. This is what I charge for all the time and hours vested in by myself to learn these things. That time is money. It took away from hours of my life to figure something out. It's worth money. And, you know, someone can say yes or no. Because some things are not that easy. You can go to all the forums in the world on the Internet. And you will see all the gibberish talk between people. 
but very rarely does anything get solved. It's better to contact a manufacturer, like I do, with many of my issues. Say, I have such and such a machine. I want to upgrade to such and such a RAM. I look at you, you sell RAMs. I took my machine apart. I see the parts made by Samsung. I want the exact part, you know, brand, uh, fresh paint, or whatever it was called. And do you have it? And you know for a fact it works. And then they give you answers. They do. Because they're on Amazon or they're on uh, eBay selling this stuff. And that's what I do. I, I deal with manufacturers. Very few computer people can know all the stuff because they just have one or two machines and that's their experience. Even if they work in a particular company, they've never expanded beyond that. And they're very compartmentalized. If you're an IT guy or if you're an artist or whatever you do, you rely on the staff to fix the stuff. You know, your machine breaks down, you call the IT guy and you go, hey, buddy, this happened. And he goes, I'll have it back to you in two hours. Use this in the meantime. You know what I mean? So that doesn't happen when you're a sole proprietor and also educating yourself. When it's down, well, it's like you're in a canoe without a paddle. You're not going to go anywhere. You're not going to create a darn thing. you got to solve it. And you got to solve it without your panel. You know, you've got to figure out a way to repair, to get it going, to do something different. So if you don't like those kind of challenges, uh, being an independent artist is probably not for you. If you think everything has to happen, look at his split like you see in those timeless videos. You're sadly mistaken. All those guys lie. <laughs> I work on this myself. I know it's involved. Yes, they have like a little kind of a repeat style that they do. And everything that they do looks the same. And that's their style. But, man, to say that it... it this takes four minutes and this takes four minutes because I figured out this formula. Uh, has its plus and its minuses. Yes, if you feel you have to work so super fast because you have so many projects, another one's coming in two seconds, then that's, that makes sense to me. Like, you know, a little, I don't know how many projects you feel you need, you know? So now, we've got this kind of going. So we're going to get into a white. We're going to go back to our swatches. We're going to pick white. And we're going to do some highlights in here. Now we're going to turn down this opacity and everything else accordingly. But when you watch my videos, you know, you can always stop them, go back, play them over, skip, buy something you don't want to study, whatever. That's the whole point of having a video, is you have that power. See, boom, just touch that. Just touched it. Nice highlight. We're starting to build one guy in this totem. But I didn't give much talking about what I'm doing because I want you to pay attention to the art. And if you have a dialogue going like this, you're forcing your brain. You're going to go, damn, that guy just keeps talking about shit. I want to do the art. And you're focusing on the art. I'm making you focus. I'm not just giving it away. But every stroke's there. There's no editing. It's all done in real time. So you have a video you can play again and again and see what I'm doing. Look at all the dials that change, what's happening each time, how brush strokes are shifting, and how it gets to look organic or shiny or whatever. The key of shiny is high contrast between light and dark. See like that metal up there above his eye. And then save every so often or you're going to be SOL, you'll be shit out of luck as they say. Up the creek without the pal. I'm going to do an hour's work here, and then I'm going to keep working tonight. I had to force myself to get into it. 
because I just so <laughs> I beat myself up so bad, and I th and you know it's fresh air and it makes you groggy when you get back. And it's just wonderful. I love fall. Changing leaves, crinkle, crinkle under you. Yeah. You like the eyes and stuff. Kind of baboon like. Now I'm not thinking baboon, but when I look at it, I see baboon. Because my brain has assembled all this stuff within it to generate the uh, image. Mm. Double nose, triple nose. It's a nose within a nose within a nose within a nose. See? Stuff happening. Land, human, jaguar, animal manifestation of a face. And then I hit save again. Oh, man. Excuse me. I'm hanging in there, folks. I'm going to try and get this hour done. I'm going to go back in with the dark brush again, but right now I'm just trying to scoop off some light. Bending and torquing, and you know, what's coming at you is the brightest, what's going away from you is the darkest. Uh, run it down the side or something like this, and show all your edges and gears and hidden stuff. This is turning into something really, very cool. I don't know what it is, and that's how I like to operate. See the high contrast. It's organic looking, but it's also metallic looking. It's very uh, in line, I walk. I walk the line. I walk the line. Yeah. And this is just one little head. I mean, this head's going to be so tiny. We're going to expand back from it shortly. I'm just wondering how much faster it's going to be with 28 gigs of RAM. I mean, this is now working pretty cherry pie fast. Uh, but 8 gigs of RAM will allow me to work in color like this very quickly. It gets bogged down when you get into color, when you get into 100 layers. I got stuff with, you know, 70 layers on it. Things. That's my bad way of working. Because there's ways to be more economical in your layers. What's funny is I lean back <laughs> Like I'm looking at a drawing board, which is totally ridiculous, because this is a one way, this is a screen, but I still feel like I'm doing a hand art, the traditional way on a canvas or an MDF board or something like that. Well, that's pretty sweet. Let me save this, and let me put this at size, so we're going to view actual. And that's the output size at 40 by 40 inches. But at 100%, let's see, we're going to just fit on a screen. And there, the head is tiny. But you can see all that detail because it's a 4K monitor. Scandalous. Just scandalous. So let's zoom in again. 
Hmm. Oxygen, I need oxygen. All right, I gotta take a quick break. I'm gonna pause this and I will come right back. I didn't have to tell you that, but I'm going to tell you that, all right? Ah, yes, back at it. So, got distracted for a while. But we're continuing, this is right where we left off, so you won't miss a thing. I'm gonna do 20 more minutes and call it a video. Provided uh, there's no hiccups and it continues to work where I, where I left off. Man, I had a lot to do. Uh, one thing turned into another. Sorry about that. But it's seamless on your end. On my end, it just took a lot of work. That's all. Nothing you saw. Nothing you missed. I just had to stop the video and tend to life. So I'm drawing with white over my black here. You can see all the settings. That's why I do it this way on a 19-inch uh, or 24-inch Cintiq Pro monitor. So it's got a nice palette. You know, you can. Um, I mean, it's got a nice real estate. The screen is big enough where you see the entire software program. Plenty of space where I'm drawing. Uh, actually, on the screen, you know, this is probably. Uh, let me put my finger. This is nine inches high by about a foot, the actual image area. So nine by 12 inches, just uh, as I draw, way magnified. You know, this is like, I don't know how many percent <clears throat> up we are. Let me see. Let me uh, view, zoom. So here, let's, let's try this at 400%. That's pretty big. Let's try... 200%. That's kind of big. So see, we're drawing maybe. Oh yeah, we're not even drawing the scale. That's right, because it's a 40 by 40 inch image. So we're going down. So we want to be, uh, say, zoom to width. This will give you an idea of. Let's put the whole image in there so you can see. So zoom uh, to fit. That's the 40 by 40. At real size, the head that we're working on in the upper left would be view, zoom, actual is <laughs> what? Let's see where it is. It's just, a, yeah, it's about what I'm doing, actual size. Right. Now, if somebody buys it as a 10 by 10 or 20 by 20, it's a quarter of this size. So. I could draw even bigger, but the detail would be so crazy that, forget it. Because I'm a detail freak, and I will put something like this into a fingernail. <laughs> All right, this uh, eye on the left-hand side should be darker. Let's darken that down. Uh, am I in black? Yeah, black. Okay. Let me do a little tooling on that. Let's see here. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now we'll put like a tiny highlight in there with the white. So let's um, let's go over to our white swatch, and let's put just a little. Digit up here. Just a little. And then the one closest to me on the right hand side, the larger of the two by perspective, I'll put two little 
reflection too, maybe. Yeah. Now we're going to put a hot spot in each of those. So I'm going to take opacity up temporarily to 100 and flow temporarily up to 60 or something. And I'm going to drill down. You see those? Uh, it's like a target where the cursor is. I'm going to hit that with a little bit stronger white. And I'm going to hit this one with a little bit stronger. Just suggesting uh, reflections from far away. And uh, it breathes light into it. Now, you don't want those to be the same weight, obviously. So let's take the hardness up and press one closer to me. Just pick it up and hit it a couple times. And that's a little bit brighter than the one behind it. Same thing on the left now. I want to target it in there. And this is small stuff. This is a 10 pixel circle. Just a little bit more. Yeah. So just enough of a glint suggestion of a glint. Could be a little bit darker. Let's take hardness up to 100. Let's take flow up to 100. Make sure we're in all hundreds and hit that really intense, but it won't be as bright on that side because there's a lot of gray. Just like that. Now one in the front. Kind of a... There we go. Kind of a a little more. Hmm. Because it's a peculiar pencil, it doesn't really do a solid. It's not doing me a solid, as they say. I think I'm going to have to go to the brush. Let's see, I remember this is 16 I'm supposed to be on, right? 16 in. Was it pens? Yeah. Okay, so we lost that. So hang on. There we go. That's good. And then let me do it. Let me just brighten that whole thing up and divide it with the black. Let's get into the black now. Swatches. And then make this cursor so tiny. I can kind of get some black in there. And now back to the white. This is how I kind of figured out where. We're still in black. Come on, come on. Wait. All right, do this one. There we go. And. Oh, this frustrating program sometimes. We're in white. We've got all these flows, super hot. And you think we could blast a mark in here. But not so much. Okay, I'm liking that, kind of. Yeah, that's good. All right, let's get back to my brush, 16. And was it pen? This 16. <laughs> uh, 16 is the size, of course. Pixels, but and then there's that the brush you're picking, picking. So when I change that, you see it goes out of it. So interesting. Well, that's what I want. So all right, let's try a little uh, black edge. I mean, a white edge. That's what I meant. 
All right, again, delirious, end of the day. Uh, undo. Undo and turn down everything. That's okay. Let's turn down the uh, 64 on the opacity. Take down the flow a little bit. Got the sniffles, just walked down two blocks to my party store nearby where I got myself a nice coffee. And a can, a little Java monster. Perk me up. Okay. I don't even know if those things really work, but here we go. Let's see. Ooh, it's fall out there. Yeah. All right. There we go. See, it's textured, and I'm playing with the edge and the size of the brush as I draw with my left hand. Left hand on the uh, express key remote, right hand holding the pen, and messing around with this stuff. Okay. And uh, don't want these numbers to be where they're at. It's bugging me. Okay. Let's try this again. Okay. There we go. This is made out of a material that we don't know what it is exactly. Do I want part shiny? Do I want a metal? I'm assuming it's kind of metallic or it could be uh, a combination of metals and gemstones and uh, who knows what this technology is that built this staff weapon, uh, whatever it is. A fantasy tool. <clears throat> Again, it could be a walking stick, it could be a handheld weapon, it could be a, a totem pole, whatever you want to fantasize it is. Because the scale of everything really. It's up to the person too. It could be gigantic. It could be 32 feet tall. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Hey, if everything was super serious, there'd be an awful boring life. So you need guys like me that are glib, flib, and just kind of fly by the seat of their pants every now and then. As the expression goes, you're just not put your toe into the water to see what it's like and then decide if you're going to jump in to the river and just freaking run and jump. You ran and you jumped into the river. So now, see how you build all these layers of light and dark and texture and Solid and softness and optical illusion. Something's behind, something's in front, something is thin, something is thick. Uh, doesn't need to have all that rhyme and reason that we think of those. Suggestion is, is good. Suggestion. Remember, this is, it could be in an amorphous state where it's forming or it's deforming or it's doing something. It's not solid per se. It's not unsolid either. Ah, man, it's so much fun to play around. And you see, I make, uh, you know, equivalents of errors, you might say, or whatever, but I, I turn those into opportunities of creativity. See, like that, just go back one. It looked nice one back, see? Then you can kind of come along that edge really sharp. Yeah. Like that. Mm -hmm. Defining the parts. By the way, last night I watched uh, 
the girl with the dragon tattoo again, the uh, Rooney Mara version, not the European one, which I like them both. I just happened to watch the American one again because I own it as a DVD. And this particular laptop lets me play DVD stuff. <laughs> I love my Asus laptop. So I watched it. And I like that movie more and more each time I see it. Although it deals with tough subject matter, I think Mara Rooney just killed it. She acted so good in that movie that... Uh, I'm super impressed. She stole that movie, man. She was so talented in that movie. It's funny. I mean, she plays everything from a uh, psycho to an elegant uh, heiress to whatever person who had a horrible life, of course. And it gets horrible and horrible. <laughs> but she sure shows the dimensions that. She did it perfect. Just perfect. Great directing, great everything. I highly recommend The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, both versions, by the way. The European one is superb, too, in a different way, because that actress is a very good actress. And you've seen her in many movies. Uh, even though the movies aren't as good as she is, like that uh, recent Ridley Scott uh, alien thing was pretty bad, but the actress herself played the roles good. Yeah, Ridley Scott, I'm not impressed with Ridley Scott anymore. Seems to be a sellout. Our world's influenced a lot by what's going on in the White House. We won't go there. Okay. So. This guy is looking very cool. My machine's so dialed in now, it just does not crash. I'm also more sensible about saving, not going back and forth over my strokes 20 times. Um, you know, not having 30 apps open at the same time. So I'm economizing in a lot of ways that really make more sense. Uh, I'm getting more efficient as an artist in the digital world. And I'm totally digging digital way more than I do uh, real world art these days. I would prefer any kind of commission in the world on this uh, because now I have the ability. In my opinion. No, just my opinion. I like myself. <laughs> I'll put in the time. I have played, played the dues. All right, now, I've got my kind of a Jaguar Man King on top here. I cannot believe the luck I am having after all this dialing in of software, hardware, upgrades. On a shoestring budget. My studio is not impressive compared to, you know, if you worked for Weta or somewhere. But, um, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. And anybody that wants to ask me any questions, feel free. Just put your questions, send them across the net to me. Be glad to answer anything I can intelligently answer. Be glad to share what I have, except for some of my personal art secrets that make me me. Uh, as far as my hardware setup, I don't really care if I share that. I want people to be able to draw, of course. And my philosophies, uh, I have to tend to keep those to myself because people get freaked out. So, it's not the world I grew up in where everybody studied you know, the ancient, the Greek philosophers and the Romans and uh, European and Descartes and Degas, artwork and just the whole hodgepodge of uh, my generation. 
today it's just very superficial in a lot of ways where really digital is the focus I said and I see it very myopic yeah it's great to have all these luxuries that people want because that's their goal but there's no way I want to come in the house and talk to my refrigerator and my dishwasher and all that stuff they're freaking machines and they can just do what they do I'm happy to wash the dishes by hand I'm happy to put my own food in and out of the refrigerator use your body and it will reward you by longevity and good health this is my philosophy of stuff is you know I use machines like a tool it's a tool whether it's a hammer a drill a computer I don't worship any of them and innovations are being made in all of them but I don't really you know I I use a tool to perform a task that's it and if it can't perform the task then I have to either upgrade to a better tool or modify my tools and you can do that in a lot of ways with you know other tools besides computers you know you could make your own chisel blade you could make your own better handle you could make your own hammer people take parts of hammers let's say you take off a nice ball peen hammer or sledgehammer head sorry and uh, just take that whole sledgehammer in fact and cut it so you got maybe like eight inches at the top with the sledgehammer on it and put that in a vise and that makes a nice anvil for bending uh, sheet metal annealing you know stuff like that um, so yeah you know we're just rambling but sometimes the, it forces the viewer to study the art more or it's like you're having a conversation with somebody who's visiting you and it's not still solitary so much it's another reason why I do that is, uh, you know, if I was talking to you in my house while I was drawing, uh, you wouldn't want to know I'm hitting this key and that key and whatever. You'd just be watching me like you are now. And we are over an hour, so... Thank you for tuning in. Let me say this. I'm going to reduce it to the actual size, or to uh, full fit on a screen. Look how tiny that head is. And look at that detail and clarity and sharpness. But it's actually going to be at this size. Let's go to 40 by 40. So it's uh, actual size. And let's roll it over. Oop. Sorry about that. Uh, edit. Undo. Oops. Uh, actual size. Hand tool. There we go. That is actual size if you buy this at 40 by 40 whenever it's done. Ah, I'm a swig of my iced tea. Bye, peeps. Thanks for watching me. I really appreciate it.